Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about the isothermal compression of gases. This is a first in a series of four videos which will all look at different changes we can do to gases. In these cases we're going to be calculating Q, which is heat, delta H, which is enthalpy, delta U, which is internal energy, and W, which is work. So each of these four videos is going to take a look at calculating those four variables under different circumstances. Let's take a look at a problem that includes an isothermal compression. It says 2.8 moles of an ideal gas is reversibly and isothermally compressed from a volume of 7.2 liters to a volume of 2.6 liters at a temperature of 175 Kelvin. For this process, find delta U, delta H, W, and Q. So first, a few notes about definitions. Isothermal means no change in temperature. So it might not even include in the problem the word isothermal. It might just tell you the temperature is constant, or it might even just tell you the temperature is 175 Kelvin throughout that compression. And that's telling you the temperature doesn't change. So isothermal means no change in temperature. What does reversible mean? That concept is a little trickier. So here is a picture showing our compression. Notice we start with a larger volume, and over time, we allow that volume to shrink by adding a bigger mass. That's a compression. What makes it isothermal is that T1 and T2 are the same. And by the way, what that means is as that mass is increasing and the piston is dropping, energy in the form of heat is transferring out. So that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna here slowly, incrementally increase our mass one to eventually be mass two. So incrementally we'll increase that and that will compress our cylinder. And then that energy is gonna transfer, some of that energy anyway, is gonna transfer out as heat. So the reversible part means that the compression can be reversed by small incremental changes. What we're talking about there is that we're only gonna allow mass one to change by very small amounts. So it's gonna be mass one plus just a little, and then plus just a little. Technically, each time it increases by an infinitesimal amount of mass, so the smallest little increment of mass that we can possibly add. And what that does is it allows us to go back and forth between these two states by these small changes in increments. We can go back from the compressed state to the expanded state, back and forth. And this gives us a nice idealized situation to calculate work and heat and enthalpy and internal energy. It turns out that these changes, the work for example done, depends on how quickly we change that mass. And by changing it really slowly, we actually minimize the amount of work we have to do to compress it. So this is gonna be, the, the calculation for work we're gonna do here is actually gonna represent the minimum amount of work to do that compression, or the exact amount of work if we do it reversibly. Okay, so now that we've talked about some of those definitions, let's begin calculating our variables. First off, let's do delta U, change in internal energy. Remember, what we're dealing with here is an ideal gas. And that means all the math we do depends on it being an ideal gas. And I'll make specific note of that whenever we assume it. An ideal gas has energy only dependent on temperature. So if I want to increase the energy of an ideal gas, I have to increase its temperature. Since the temperature stays constant, that means the energy of our gas stays constant. That means there's no change in internal energy. So since T is constant, delta U is equal to zero. So that one's pretty easy. And this variable, as well as a lot of other variables as we go through these series of four videos, are gonna be things that you wanna memorize. You wanna memorize that delta U is zero, for an ideal gas under isothermal compression. All right, so now let's calculate delta H. Delta H turns out also to be zero. This is related to the fact that delta T is constant, but it's a little more complicated. I'm not gonna go through the proof in detail here, but I will link to it below so you can see why that is. So just remember for isothermal processes, delta U and delta H are both zero. Okay, now let's calculate W and Q, which are actually gonna take some math. Okay, first up, Let's do work. Work is, in this case, PV work. That means we're doing work by changing pressure or volume. So here we're compressing our cylinder. We're changing the volume. And that means we can calculate work with this expression over here. This little dW is an infinitesimal change in work is equal to negative pressure times a little infinitesimal change in volume. So most often when we use that formula, we're gonna use the integrated version, which looks like work equals negative P delta V, oops, P dV. And we're gonna integrate that from our V initial to our V final. So in this case, 
we know that pressure is actually a function of volume. So you might be tempted to say like, oh, pressure doesn't have a V there, so I can just integrate with respect to volume. It's just gonna tack on a V. That's not quite true because pressure is a function of volume, as we know from our ideal gas law. So actually, if we rearrange the ideal gas law, we'll get that P is equal to NRT over V. And that is actually what we're gonna plug into our P there in that work expression to make the volume dependence explicit. Remember, we're integrating with respect to volume. So if pressure changes when volume changes, which it does, then I need to take note of that. So that means work is gonna be equal to negative the integral of VI to VF NRT over V dV. All right, now N, R, and T are all constant in this case, right? N is the number of moles, that doesn't change. R is the gas constant, that doesn't change. And T is the temperature. And since this is an isothermal process, we know that doesn't change. And so what we're gonna get then is work equals negative N, R, T, the integral of one over V, dV. I'll leave off the bounds for just a second. When I integrate one over V, I'm gonna get negative N, R, T, ln of v, and I'm gonna to have to evaluate that from our bounds, vi to vf. Okay, so that tells me now how to calculate work. Here's the thing, if I plug in v initial and v final, I'm gonna get negative nrt ln of vf minus negative nrt ln of v initial. And remember, when I subtract two logs, I can actually just stack them on top of each other. So that gives me a nice, tidy equation for work. Work equals negative nRT ln VF over VI. So that is an expression for work. But remember, it's an expression for work under these specific circumstances. And this is a common theme with these gas problems. You can only use certain equations at certain times. And this equation for work works but only with isothermal compression. Work equals negative NRT ln VF over VI. And now we can plug in our variables and solve for work. Work is equal to negative 2.8 times 8.3145. That's always the value for our gas constant in these problems, because that's in terms of joules. And then we want to multiply by the temperature, which is 175. And we want to take the log of V final, which is our seven, I'm sorry, our 2.6 liters and divide that by 7.2 liters. And we'll get that work in this case, rounded to two sig figs, is 4,100 joules. Cool. So that's work. So notice we found delta U and delta H, which were all zero. We found work. And now we just need to find Q. The trick here is to remember that I have my first law of thermodynamics right there, delta U equals Q plus W, and I know that that's equal to zero because I've already said delta U is equal to zero. And that means that Q is equal to negative work. If I just subtract W from both sides, I get Q is equal to negative work. So that means that Q is actually gonna be negative 4,100 joules. Let's pause and make sure that makes sense. Well, I'm compressing my cylinder, so that means I'm doing work on the system. So it makes sense then that work is positive. Meanwhile, as I'm doing work on the system, it's gonna be transferring any heat added out of the system. Because if it keeps any heat, that's gonna raise the temperature. So what's happening is as I compress this incrementally, I'm doing work and that heat is transferring out so that the temperature never changes. Since the heat is transferring out, it makes sense that it's negative. So our signs check out. That's always a good thing to do in these problems, make sure that your signs match up with what you'd expect. And that's a good way to check yourself. Okay, so that was the isothermal compression of gases. And uh, in the next few videos, we're gonna go over other circumstances. So here's just a summary then of the formulas that we used to figure out Q, W, delta H, and delta U. Here are those same variables under different circumstances. Now, each of those equations has different derivations involved that we're gonna go through in those videos and also different restrictions on when you can use them. So you wanna check out when you can use each one of those uh, and understand that thoroughly so that you can make sure and do the correct thing in these problems. Thanks for watching and as always, you can subscribe or comment below.